It's time to get the CRX ready for its first test drive. Unfortunately, I don't have a working clutch at the moment, so let's go ahead and fix that. Here I have the kit from Hush Performance to convert the CRX from cable to hydro. And with it mounted on the CRX factory pedal assembly, you can see the gist of it of how it's going to work. Now the CRX from factory came with a cable actuated clutch and the K-series engine is a hydraulics. Uh, so you need a way to convert that and that's where this kit comes into play. Up until this point, I pretty much have bought every EF kit from Hush Performance. And I got to say, all of their kits are very nice and well done. But this is by far my favorite kit. I think everything just fell into place. Everything just fit. Everything was included inside of the kit that I needed to get the job done. And it just worked right out the box. Very first time. You can see how I ran the clutch hydraulic line. And this is not its final routing. This is just what I did quick and easy just to get the job done. You can see I ran it around the engine mount. And it lines up perfectly with the little bracket that I welded here on the side of the frame. That looks very clean and OEM. So here goes the reservoir that came with the uh, kit. Look how cute it is. As you can see, it's not mounted yet because I'm working that in the future. And here I have a brand new bottle of brake fluid and the line going to the slave cylinder. I'm actually doing a reverse bleeding because I actually had a hard time to get the system to bleed. Which turned out was I didn't have the pedal fully pulled back for some reason the pedal was depressed that was my fault but as you can see i was actually sucking air through the top of my vacuum pump so i was essentially uh using it like a straw to suck the brake fluid in as opposed to doing it the opposite way that you normally would bleed brakes but as you can see the clutch is actuating and that's all working now here goes a bracket that i made to mount the little clutch fluid reservoir and i just kind of made this up real fast and i painted it with pur 15 so it's a very durable finish but I did have to grind off the paint on both ends because I'm gonna go ahead and panel bond this in place. And in order to do that, you need bare steel. And I'm just using these two magnets right here to hold the bracket in place while the, the panel bonding adhesive cures. So that took a full 24 hours. But here goes the finished product. You can see it looks really nice and I think it really shows off this nicely machined part from Hush Performance. So it, it just works really well and I think it turned out nicely. In my last Yerex video, someone pointed out that the battery terminal that I'm using on a positive side isn't the best choice for this, it, it, that it's really made for like sound systems, and they're right, I can agree with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that today. I think we can all agree that this is a better, more solid uh, connection. So as you can see, I do read all of my comments, and whenever I get good advice, I do take you up on that offer because I'm not one of those people that says, nope, my way or the highway. That's not true, guys. I've got plenty to learn from people and constructive criticism goes a long way. I think we could all agree that this is a more solid and secure connection. Now, don't worry about the negative side because as you can see, this is a regular terminal on this side. So there's no issues with it at all. Someone else also pointed out, and heck, it might've even been the same person, that the positive nuts on the starter and the alternator being exposed like that isn't a good idea. So I found these like battery cable uh, covers online, little cheap stuff. And I don't expect them to fit perfectly, but something is better than nothing. You can see the starter, uh, I could use some trimming. I'm sure I could make it work if I spent a little bit more time on it. Uh, the one on the alternator actually fits a lot better, but it's definitely better than just leaving them exposed. So thank you for that comment. I appreciate that stuff. And you can see, let's go ahead and put this on the battery now and it's a really nice solid connection so i do appreciate the person who or the people who left those comments because it kind of pushed me to do something better now i really didn't want to take the crx out for its first test drive without a proper air filter so i picked these items up online just by going off of measurements my throttle body is a 90 millimeter so i wanted something that's 90 millimeters all the way through without downsizing so i found this like 45 degree uh silicone coupler it's actually a turbo diesel intercooler coupler <laughs> and it's freaking massive to mass the throttle body of course so here I am drilling a hole to fit the temperature air sensor. No, wait, what is it? It's the intake air temperature sensor. That's what it is. And I found this little grommet and I just went ahead and reamed it out to fit and accept the sensor. You can see it actually looks pretty clean and turned out really nice if you ask me. And it was a way better solution than just drilling a hole and popping the sensor into the coupler. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the car and you can see a lot of confined space here. So not much to work with, but I think it gets the job done. And honestly, it doesn't look half bad. And just a quick check for clearances, you can see the intake clears the upper radiator hose, no problems at all. And on this side, the filter itself is touching just the very corner of this bracket. But guys, it, it's foam. You get what I'm saying? It's it's like touching by a hair and it's foam. I think it'll be fine. So <laughs> not a big issue. And here on the right side of the filter, again, it's not even touching the body of the car. It's close, but it's not touching. So I'm happy with that. And I think it turned out pretty decent for making a custom filter just off of buying random parts online. The CRX has 93 octane in it, but the fuel that's in the tank right now has been sitting in it for about two years. So that's not good. And I really don't want to be pushing that stuff through the system any more than I already have. So I'm going to go ahead and extract the fuel the easiest way possible, which is by making a custom line. Guys, it took me like five minutes and it was the whole reason why I designed everything like this with quick connects because I'm able to just quickly disconnect the line that feeds the fuel injectors and I could plug in the line that I just made. How easy is that, right? So the other end is just going to go directly into a small gas tank that I have just laying around and I could actually just turn on the fuel pump and it's going to push all that old fuel right out the tank. It doesn't get any easier than that. Now initially I tried to just turning the key into the run position. Obviously it's going to run the pump for like two or three seconds but I quickly realized that that's a very slow process. So I ended up using my power probe. I went directly to the fuel pump, giving it 12 volts. And I did that until um, I just noticed that the pump wasn't pumping out any more gasoline, meaning the tank was empty. And I actually got about two and a half gallons out of the tank. So that's what had been sitting in here for about two years. Now that I got all of the old fuel out of the tank, let's go ahead and disconnect the custom line that I just made and we'll reattach the line that feeds the fuel injectors. Guys, it doesn't get any easier than that. Am I wrong? <laughs> so anyways, I figure while I'm messing with fuel, let me go ahead and remove the fuel filter. And this right here, guys, is the whole reason why I designed like this and I use this specific fuel filter because I was able to change out this fuel filter in like a minute. I'm not even exaggerating. So super nice and my design ideas are finally paying off. Now the filter that I just took off granted wasn't that old or beat up but I was pushing old fuel through it. So I think it just made sense to just put a brand new fuel filter in right now. Like I said, took less than a minute to do the whole thing. With that taken care of, I stepped out and got some brand new fresh 93 octane fuel and let's go ahead and pour it into the CRX. There you go. Drink up little buddy. The first time I started this engine, it didn't take long to realize that this thing is stupid loud. So I needed an exhaust. Now my initial thought was to do things like as cheap as possible. I was going to go to AutoZone guys. Yes, I was going to get in the zone, AutoZone. <laughs> and uh, you know, just kind of hack it up and do some cheap low budget job. And sure, I could have done this for really dirt cheap and found a way to mate the headers down to the factory exhaust. But I knew that wasn't the ultimate route I was going and at the end of the day even spending something like $50 in AutoZone would be a waste of $50. You get what I'm saying? This exhaust isn't the most expensive nor is it the cheapest. I found a good middle ground that I feel comfortable spending on an exhaust system. And comparing it to the one that came off of the car you can see the diameter difference of the piping. And the fact that it just looks way nicer is just like you know icing on the cake and it actually fit pretty decent if you ask me minus some things over here on this end because of course it was made for a factory crx not one with a case swap so that flange isn't going to work but this flange is the one that we need for the headers on the case swap and i actually went to autozone and picked up a flex pipe that i plan on welding into the system instead of having everything just hard mounted to each other because i think it might be able to reduce uh, potential cracks in the future 
So my plan is to use this reducer as like a sleeve to combine two pieces together. And here's a pro tip. If you use a clamp on a piece of pipe like this, it ensures that you get a straight cut all the way around. And here is what I'm using like that small piece as kind of like a collar or a slip joint. And you can see there is a little bit of wiggle room. Now I did do all my measurements very carefully, but this uh, being able to slide in now gives me some wiggle room. Now I did end up having to cut off this bend. It turns out I actually need the flex pipe to come straight out of the resonator instead of having that bend. So I just chopped it off and re-welded it together. And if we look at the tip coming out the back of the car here, it actually looks really nice and centered. I'm super happy with how it turned out. So I'm underneath the car right now and I'm just putting in a few tacks on where I want everything to stay. So I could pull out the, essentially what I'm making is a test pipe. So I'm just gonna call it that. So I'm putting in the tacks right now so I could pull out the test pipe and fully weld it. And there we have it. Is it pretty? No, not at all. But it's gonna get the job done and that's what's important. So now this all welded up and it's still kind of warm. It's not hot, it's just warm. I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint this thing. Now I laid down some like etch primer and then I found this which is, you know, says that it withstands like high heat. But let me tell you right now, this stuff baked and crumbled off the second it got hot. I I think it's because I use a primer. I think if I would have just gone with the high temperature stuff, like the silver stuff first and only, I, maybe it would have been fine. But I'll tell you right now, by using that primer, it just flaked off immediately. <laughs> so anyways, as you can see, we got some more Haltech goodies here. This is basically a glorified oxygen sensor. So let me go ahead and install this before we put on the test pipe because that thing is still basically uh, trying to dry from the spray paint. The cooling fan not working is an issue, so I wanted to see which wire does what. My suspicion was the black one was going to be ground, but you got to double check these things. So if I put power to the ground, you can see it blows air out. But if I go ahead and reverse that polarity, it actually sucks the air in. And that's what I'm looking for. At least I think that's what I want. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? Because when you're driving, it's going to be blowing air towards the radiator. So uh, my suspicion was correct. The black wire is for ground. Uh, but as you can see, these connectors are different. The factory CRX connector does not match. So I'm going to go ahead and chop both of them off and put in this connector that I bought online. It just uses two wires. Pretty simple, pretty basic. I just have to make sure that I'm putting the positive to positive and negative to negative so the fan runs in the correct direction. So I installed this zip tie that has like a specialty little push and retainer clip and I plan on mounting this right here on the plate for the radiator but it needs a hole drilled first and obviously I'm not going to try to drill a hole while it's attached to the radiator. So the next time that plate comes out I'll be sure to drill that hole. Moving on to the inside of the car, these are the four wires that I had to connect from the Haltech ECU to the original wire harness. And I did it real quick and ghetto with electrical tape because I wasn't sure I was connecting to the right wire. So now that I know it all works, I could make that a little bit more permanent. As you can see, I got a four pin uh, connector online. It has a like weatherproof seal, real nice, good quality stuff. And as you can see, I really tidied up those wires. And that just ensures that when I go to unplug everything, everything just comes apart nicely, no more cutting wires. Mm -hmm. 